hi everyone welcome to Wigan Secret today we're going to make a good old apple crumble with some gorgeous British Bramley apples doesn't come any better than this for uh, apples that you're going to do an apple crumble or an apple pie or apple sauce with uh, cooking apples that have a much stronger flavor than your regular eating apple um, I've had crumbles made with regular eating apples and I just don't think they compare to using a cooking apple so that is exactly what we're using today I think I say exactly far too much and I hate the way I say it exactly exactly Karen right so we're going to start off by peeling them and I was thinking for the crumble I might actually put some walnuts in because I've just been watching MasterChef luckily I bought some Bramley apples anyway one of the um, chefs on there it's it's not, our master chef it's not professionals or anything it's just home cooks well i guess i think american master chef and australian and canadian master chef they're all the straight all the same aren't they it's just um amateur cooks how can we be amateur cooks if we cook everything at home but yeah we don't get paid for it do we anyway she she made an apple crumble and she put some walnuts in it and i thought oh i think i'll try that might be a bit too rash for john mind i have to say a bit too way out there different to put some walnuts in an apple crumble <laughs> we won't tell him we'll just make it and see what he thinks shall we and I, I've actually just made a pot a corned beef pie and I'm wishing I'd filmed that as well. So with the corned beef pie, you just uh, chop up some onions, boil a few potatoes, two tins of corned beef, plenty of salt and pepper, especially pepper. And then I just buy buy pastry I don't make it myself John Tarod says no need to buy pastry just use the bought stuff so if it's good enough for him it's good enough for me so that's in the oven as we speak and that's what we'll be having for supper today so we'll have a bit of corned beef pie and a bit of apple crumble for dessert. And next time I make a corned beef pie, I'll film it. I don't think it's like John's favourite thing, mind I have to say, corned beef pie. But for me, it's like, it just reminds me of my childhood. If you watch my video when I was in Durham uh, the other week, I was desperately trying to find a corned beef square and I couldn't find one anywhere. I've lived over here now for 28, 38, 48, 58, 30 years. So I've lived here longer than I ever lived in the North East. Um, and corned beef squares absolutely were a thing but you still can get corned beef pasty so if you live in the northeast I had a coop Couplands uh, that's a bakery um, I had a Couplands corned beef pasty in it and it was really good it, it had, had plenty of corned beef in it uh, I got a corned beef pasty here at the local butchers and it was mind everything else i got at the butchers was excellent but this corned beef pasty was absolutely pathetic um it it was just potato with a little bit of corned beef in and the amount of corned beef we're, we're talking a centimeter that's all that was in there can you see my hands what am i doing yeah it was only a centimeter deep it was like that 
and it was all potato with a tiny bit you could just see little shreds of corned beef in it it's like call that a corned beef pasty i mean it looked luscious because the pastry was nice and full and i'm not one for buying things because they're big i'd rather have something little and lovely than something big and a bit naff but this was really naff So, uh, yeah, plenty of pepper and onion and a little bit of potato so before I'm going to chop. And then just wipe these, these black bits off. Now these, they can go brown really, really quick. So the quicker you get them chopped up, and in a pan with some water and sugar, uh, the better. So I'm using my ceramic knife today and I'm a bit scared because the last time I used it I cut my finger. I always do that when I get a new knife. Look at that, aren't they beautiful? lovely and sharp these ceramic knives i wonder how they are for actually sharpening them i'm really i have mentioned uh last time i used it in a video it doesn't feel like this ceramic blade's very strong like it could snap really easy if you try to so cut something really tough with it and someone had put a comment on the video and said uh that that they chip quite easily so um yeah not ideal really i mean i i only bought it because i've seen people cutting chopping stuff up with them i can't even think what now um and they just look so clean and nice it, probably on some of those those cookery videos you see not cookery videos like I'm doing, like ASMR cookery videos. No talking, those ones. And the ASMR videos, you know, um, I'm not keen at all on the talking. Where they're talk, trying to talk really quiet like this. And they're making lots of smacks and noises with their mouths. And the tapping and clicking, all this. I'm not into that, uh, but I do love ASMR, as you know by now. I mean, a lot of you that are watching me here today, you've been watching me for 10 years. Oh, there's a jet going over. And it's lovely to see the same people commenting on my, on my videos. It's lovely to see new people as well. it's lovely to think like when I put the video up of the afternoon tea with me and Declan and people were writing lovely lovely things about Declan we always love to hear nice things about our children don't we um but I've never been one that brags about well I've never been one that brags about anything uh, but I've never been one of those that just brags about their children all the time. You know, if you're having conversations with people, I've never been one of those. But it was lovely to hear comments from people that remembered other videos that Declan's been in. And we're talking like 10 years ago, some of these videos. So that shows me how long you have really been watching my channel. And you're still here now today so thank you to each and every one of you and thank you to all the new people that have found me and are enjoying Eden Secret. So 
sorry, have I been chopping off screen? Honestly, you'd think I'd know by now what I was doing with making videos, wouldn't you? So these aren't really going brown straight away, which is quite a good thing. Usually I'd be rushing now to get them in the pan. And you just want to cover the bottom of the pan with just a little bit of water. Uh, don't put too much water in. And I always just put it on a low heat, uh, say number two, and just simmer them away. Now, I don't know what it is about cats today, uh, but they've just become very prominent in my head today. I heard cat on the radio, on, the, on Jeremy Vine, and then as soon as I heard him say it, on the road in front of me was a dead cat. When I came in the house, they were talking about cats on the telly. And I thought, there's something to do with cats today, so I don't know what it is yet, but we might find out later on. It might not be today, it might be in a week or a month or something, I'll go, I know what it is, I know what the cats thing was. See, now I sound absolutely bonkers, don't I? But I maybe shouldn't talk about the war, but I actually had a dream last night that Russia bombed, well, nuked us. And I was in Keswick at the time, so we'll have to wait and see if that one comes true because I'm expecting America to nuke Russia before Russia get a chance to nuke anybody else. So that's what I'm expecting. I don't know. We'll wait and see. So that's it with my water. Probably half, half a centimetre of water in there because obviously a lot of water comes out of your um, apples every time I do something with cooking apples it reminds me of when we were little uh, there was a house over the other side of South Hetton which is where I used to live when I was a kid and they had a cooking apple tree in the garden well us we had no money we were always skin we would go hungry quite often uh, I'm not making excuses for why I did it, but this is why we did it. Because if we'd had an abundance of food, we wouldn't have had to have gone thinking we could steal apples out of someone's garden. Um, and we sat there outside of the garden, I would say probably for about an hour, um, trying to pluck up the carriage to go and rob one apple off the tree. And now when I think back, and this is what happens whenever I see cooking apples. Now when I think back to those days or that day that we did that, I bet the owner was just sitting looking out of the window laughing at us. Look at those little kids there uh, trying to put the carriage up to pinch an apple. So of course we did, but when you eat a cooking apple without cooking it, it's really bitter and not very nice at all. So that taught us a lesson. Um, never to steal apples ever again. Now, this is the scary bit where everybody will be, oh my goodness, did you see how much sugar she put on there? So I'm going with four tablespoonfuls. Now, John likes everything really sweet. I don't know how he does it, but he must just have a really high metabolism. Like, when we went for a burger in Preston the other day, it was four spoonfuls of sugar in his coffee. Okay, so we're just on number two, and you can still see it simmers away quite a lot. So I think I'll just turn it down to number one. I'm not going to cook them too much because they will cook a bit more in the oven. I don't want them all mushy like applesauce. I want them to be chunky. So I think they're just about ready. They've only been on for, 
I don't know, four minutes perhaps? Just as long as it's taken me to upload that footage onto uh, iMovie. I think I'm going to turn them off. I don't need all of those walnuts, do I? That's a ton of walnuts. I do like walnuts and I tell you what I love is candied walnuts. So you just put them in a frying pan, you sprinkle a bit of sugar on, uh, again on a very low heat and you just stir and stir and stir away until the sugar caramelises on the nuts. And it's so, so nice. Salads for me, I'm not like into lettuce, tomato, cucumber, grated carrot, um, boiled eggs, which is a typically English um, salad. I prefer just the leaves, uh, salad leaves, like any salad leaves. And I like rocket as well. It's nice and peppery and strong. And then some stinky blue Stilton cheese crumbled up over the top. Some of these crumbled up over the top, a little bit of uh, sliced celery and some salad cream on the top. Uh, that's how I like my salad. And that, with a good fillet steak, can't beat it. So, I think walnuts are my favourite nuts, but I, I really love pistachios and almonds and hazelnuts. When I was a kid, hazelnuts were always my favourite at Christmas. You know how you would get a bag of mixed nuts with the shells on mind uh, at Christmas. Because it's all part of it, isn't it? The nut with the shell on it at Christmas and you, you get the nut cracker and you crack the nuts. Am I being chatty enough for you? <laughs> they are sharp, these knives, mine are really good. A bit squeaky. Make sure you keep a check on your apples. I've turned mine off now, so I know they'll be okay. But don't leave them because they'll burn on the bottom. Now this is one of the few utensils, is it a utensil? Wayne scales, are they utensils? I don't know, let me know in the comments. Uh, one of the few utensils that we use in soap making that we can use for our cooking because we're not actually using or touching, the food's not touching the Wayne scales. So I'm just making a small bowl of um, crumble and I've gone for Raymond, Raymond Blanc. I've gone for his recipe. So it calls for 120 fat, 20 grams of plain flour. But I'm wondering, because I'm just going to put a bit of crumble on the top of each of these ramekin dishes, do, do I even need that much? Well, let's find out, shall we? Uh, I think 120 might just be about right. So 120 grams of plain flour. I need my sugar again. Sixty grams of sugar. It says caster sugar, and I do like caster sugar. So that needs to go up to 180 grams for the sugar. You're probably not supposed to put the sugar in yet. You're probably supposed to mix your butter in and then add your sugar. I haven't read the instructions. So 60 grams of butter. So this is actual real butter. Uh, I've never used margarine here. 
I need it to go up to 240 and it says at room temperature oh, I think I had a close call with the blade there said 220 no I didn't it's 240 isn't it I need to put in but I always keep my butter in a margarine tub all the butter that's going in there and then rather than using my fingers which I do actually have cold hands uh, but rather than use oh, I guess I should use my fingers because I'm doing a video aren't I? I'm wondering if I can find some information about the history of apple crumble and I can read it while I'm rubbing the butter the sugar and the flour together yeah so i'm doing it in april the end of april no less a time when the weather shows signs of warming up yet there is still a deceptive chill in the air nothing beats a warm apple crumble straight from the oven gosh i can almost agree with that but creme brulee is my favorite dessert um with lashings of custard or cream on the top the dessert is mostly prepared. That's not telling us the history. We want the history. Apple crumble is known to have originated during in Britain during the World War II food rationing. Recipes for the dish were invented to replace the more extravagant apple pie recipes. However, it was not until 1924 that the apple crumble became an, an official recipe when it made its first debut into printed recipe books. Over the years, the apple crumble has gained in popularity and today a number of variations of the classic recipe are enjoyed across the UK and beyond. Variations include apple crumble, apple and raspberry crumble, black, blackberry and apple crumble. Yes, it goes on and on and on. Now, I read somewhere that it originally was the apple crisp now i've never even heard of that so what's an apple crisp is that something you have in your country is that you know something we don't have here it's just like making bath bombs in it So that rubbed in fairly fast and again you can't be proper butter it's got much more flavor lovely flavor compared to margarine each to their own some people might prefer margarine but uh, that's going to be a lovely buttery crumble topping so now it's time to check the apples put the apples in the ramekin dishes Sprinkle the crumble over the top. I wonder what temperature it needs to be. I'm guessing 200. Come on, Raymond Blanc, what your temperature should be? 190 or 170 fan or gas 5. Okay, so here's our apple. Here's what it looks like. Still chunky. And lovely so we're just gonna spoon don't want too much in there because that's quite a lot to eat for one person isn't it I really do like stewed fruit mind it's one of my favorite things use the white ones for now and if I've got any left I'll put some in the brown ones I'll put 
putting more and more in as I go along, aren't I? I want to steal some out of some of them. Right, that's all the apple gone. I'm just going to steal a little bit out of each one like I do with my cupcakes. Mmm, delicious. Mmm, delicious. Right, I'll get a spoon to sprinkle the crumble on the top. I'd always sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on on a couple of them, couldn't I? Just the right amount. Just the right amount to make seven. I mean, could maybe do with a little more crumble on, but not necessarily. I think I'll just sprinkle these brown ones with a few walnuts and just make that do. But I'm gonna try and mix those those nuts in to the crumble a bit better. Ah what that recipe is calling for is that you actually cook the crumble on a tray on its own. And then you sprinkle the crumble on top of the apple. I get it, I get it. Now, ah, we've got one extra. So it says to do that and if you just reheat them for five or ten minutes. Well, I reckon this way, this way that I'm doing it, it'll probably only take ten minutes to cook these. So let's get away with cooking them. I've took the corned beef pie out and the top. Because I've been making these, I forgot about my corned beef pie. Um, so it's quite brown on the top. It's not burnt, but John will call it burnt. I forgot about them. Can you believe that? But luckily, we're still okay. I was trying to edit the video. I'm just plain forgot about them. Anyway, they look just perfect. So, we'll be having those for supper. Corned beef pie, coming up. Okay, so Declan went with a great big chunk of pie. Uh, but look how good that is. That's the deepest corned beef pie I've ever seen. And I'm looking forward to digging into that. And then with the um, apple crumbles, we'll just go with, John will probably have, actually I might even have a, just a blob of ice cream on the top. So I hope you enjoyed this video everyone. I enjoyed making it for you. We've got corned beef pie for you tonight, darling. 
How mm. much do you want? Uh, not that much. Is it you, nice and lightly done for you? Have you made it? Yes. Not that much. Not that much. You cheeky thing. I'm not that hungry. You look a bit miserable, are you? I'll put that on the wrong plate. I don't know what about the cookies with can't be on that. These days. Well, because they can't make corn beef pie over here. What's that? I don't know. It's a present for me. It's a present for me. It's for you. It's got your name on it. I don't know what I've been ordering. I haven't ordered anything. What could it be? I don't know. I haven't ordered that. So you think someone just sent you some oh, it's a, oh, it's me knife. It's that thing. It's me knife blade. I haven't got it. No present for me. It's mine. It's something you bought for me. Again. Right, there's your supper, darling. Do you want the ketchup on it? Um. I was gonna ask the ketchup on mine, because... Ketchup on corned beef pie is nice. Blinking forgot and left it in the oven too long, didn't I?